Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to the Sunday Recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a bit about my last week in games and as always we'll start with EVE Online with another, I would say, decent week in EVE Online. It's of course still in preparation mode doing my moving from mostly a Mars space into Galente space for my main base of operations and uh, good news I have managed to get enough BPOs now in uh, uh, Galente space to fully cycle my BPC business there. Uh, I do still need a little bit of time for a couple of smaller blueprint jobs that I have running um, for blueprint improvements to finish and then I can get started with uh, 10 jobs uh, on like a 10 day basis and trying to sell them in the best spots possible. Uh, I think uh, I did run a couple of them before and uh, freighters are still going for really high prices. Orca BPCs are not doing that well and then uh, the next ones that I moved in uh, are actually uh, Dreadnought BPC. So we will see how things go from that perspective. I don't think that structures are selling all too well either at this point but yeah that's all part of the process of course and uh, pretty soon I should be able to get back into the uh, swing of things for the BPCs on a regular basis but then in Galente space of course. Uh, next phase is going to be to move my PI then so we're still running that in a Mars space. The plan is basically uh, to uh, get ready in Galente space uh, look for the planets that I want to uh, have my PI on, buy the necessary items in order to get that started. Then we'll just completely empty everything uh, in a Mars space and then just uh, decommission them and then make the move uh, for, uh, for PI as well. We're definitely planning to do that. I'm not exactly sure when it all depends a little bit how on how things evolve, but yeah, we get some more prep uh, to do. And But then I'll, I think I'll be close to finished. All I need to do is get a couple more ships ready uh, for my plans in Galente space and then we will be good to go to spend most of our time in our Galente clone. Um, we know we got that update for Faction Warfare, at least the first dev block on the Faction Warfare changes. I, I would say that it's still looking pretty good for what I'm hoping uh, it'll bring so more accessibility. Although this wasn't mentioned in the dev block, the plan is still to uh, you know provide an easy uh, entry into uh, being able to participate in faction warfare uh, stuff rather than having to join a different corporation so getting out of your alliance getting out of your corporation sounds really good to me and then uh, the second tier you could say or the extra uh, advantages bar uh, that can be filled out through other activities than just plain combat that's exactly what I was looking for as well and uh, so far the things that they've been teasing we don't have any real details of course is stuff like salvaging of battlefields, uh, bringing propaganda towers online, hacking of facilities and uh, the uh, last bit was uh, transportation of material uh, materials because of course that's uh, needed in uh, those big war efforts and yeah that's stuff that I can see myself do if that then provides me with rewards for faction warfare stuff. Uh, it could be very interesting and I'm definitely willing to try and uh, help the Galente out in that perspective. Uh, uh, other than that, yeah, we're just gonna have to uh, be a little bit patient, I do think, uh, for uh, for that update. CCP has again mentioned that there are some tidbits of story uh, stuff that, that is already in the game, but I do think that you gotta be in faction warfare to really have access to that type of stuff. And uh, anything else that I wanted to mention? No, other than that, really, because flying blueprints in a Tengu from Gal uh, Amar space to Galente space takes a long time. I haven't really done any uh, big exploration rounds or anything like that so I did go out from time to time to uh, to just uh, run a couple of anomalies but I've also spent most of my time going into uh, Jida because that's the final pin thing that I did want to mention. Uh, I pulled the trigger on some trades as well so I bought some faction warfare uh, ships, uh, some um, Kaldari cruiser, navy cruisers. I do uh, think that they're really low at the moment so they could just become profitable uh, through faction warfare changes but also I think that those uh, navy faction ships will become top dog in some of the new sites for faction warfare so I will be trying to buy some more of those in order to be ready and then potentially to use them or 
or potentially as well of course to sell them at a profit and I'm also buying quite a few uh, take two ships all of them that I'm willing uh, to to fly myself so not that they're useless uh, but yeah a couple of them as well where I'm hoping to make a profit considering where the charts are at and I made myself uh, I said to myself that I don't think CCP is going to be uh, happy if uh, take two stays this cheap compared to basically everything else uh, take three faction pirate faction all of that stuff is very very expensive compared to take two ships i think eventually uh, they will be hit by the nerf bat and that those prices will go up but we'll see if i'm right or not i definitely pulled the trigger and spent a little bit of risk uh, getting some extra take two ships as well and yeah that was uh, the last week for eve online that still gave me a little bit of time to spend in Civilization 6 and while I'm not really looking to play a full game I've actually been exploring some other build orders and some other focuses on maybe research. One of you guys mentioned that you always go for a research victory uh, so there's there's things that I'm exploring there in Civilization 6 just to try and, and get a feel of other options. I usually just play the economic game and then on top of that build on the layer that I want whether it's religion, um, whether it's military, whatever whatever uh, I want to do but uh, I'll, I'm exploring some other stuff and I'm using what I think is also a super powerful option which is Rome uh, with those free uh, trade points uh, gives you a lot of extra gold for uh, for your uh, traders and then you also have that uh, free um, building for that you every city start out with starts out with that gives you extra uh, culture it just makes for a pretty damn uh, strong option and so that's something that I've been doing as well playing a little bit more civilization 6 actually starting like half a dozen game i'm gonna try this build order i'm gonna try this build order just to see how things work out uh, sometimes you're very lucky sometimes you're unlucky uh, you know like uh, starting right next to uh, germany who then uh, immediately starts a war with you and has uh, a couple of those um, city states uh, start a war with you as well uh, but uh, it's overall I'm, I'm really still enjoying civilization 6 and uh, eventually i think i'll go into some of those harder difficulty settings as well and try to beat the game that way just to get some more of those achievements out of the way uh, but I'm also looking at what to do next and honestly in two weeks we'll have the new League for Path of Exile and uh, GGG also released their new balance manifesto which is pretty heavy on the nerves and it's not really good for me because I love playing Necromancer uh, so we'll have to see if uh, if I want to play another option for minions and then uh, what really hurts for me is that nerf to the flasks that can't gain seven charges anymore on hit uh, which was what I was planning to do I already had uh, a build sword already definitely had a skill tree ready and uh, the, the skills as well that I wanted to use uh, but uh, yeah that's that's been nerfed by over half which means that it's now basically impossible to get those um, flasks with the smallest amount needed uh, for a, for a flask trigger uh, to automatically trigger on every hit which potentially can can uh, mean some really super strong defenses as you could if you had f five of them that would then have seven charges gained on hit and then used when full uh, they would basically trigger on every single hit and that would be up to 30 percent of your hp that would be regained uh, from every single hit and that was like a practically impenetrable defensive layer that uh, that you could build but that's just been nerfed into the ground i think it's impossible uh, to get that going anymore and i don't really think that it's strong enough now as the only defensive layer because it requires huge investment right you get to take everything flask wise on the tree you get to take the very specific ascendancy so there's, there's hardly any real damage on there and then you also need a very specific uh, cluster jewel uh, in order to in order to get that uh, to work uh, i loved that option super passive and uh, you know you just kept seeing your uh, your flask trigger uh, but uh, that's not going to work out anymore and so at this point I'm basically starting to think what uh, I'm going to try uh, in Path of Exile I'm kind of hoping that they do come out with some new skills as well uh, so that maybe gives us uh, some options but I personally 
don't feel uh, bad or sad about uh, all the nerves that are there it just means that I'll have to explore other options uh, which uh, for me is fine uh, if the league mechanic is fun for me I can also enjoy a league just trying out new characters new ideas uh, without necessarily pushing end game or anything like that and that's probably gonna be the plan uh, for uh, for this next league considering that my two favorite builds have been a pretty massively nerfed uh, this time but let's uh, also wait for the full patch notes before we fully decide on what to do and uh, yeah I'm basically theory crafting my next Path of Exile League as well at this point and that was my last week in games guys thank you very much for watching and as always I'll see you next time